Valley. T Strings, I hope you've been watching P Valley, the type of show that make you pull down your Iron Man underwear, because we got to discuss that show right now. So I'm going to give it to Pay or Wait first. Last night with episode three, we all have our favorite characters. Mine started out being Autumn Knight, and I had to cut her crazy ass in favor of that vehicle known as Mercedes. However, I want to change her name to Tesla. We want to get an assessment of how you felt about episode three from last night. Um, I enjoyed last night's episode. I never cared for Autumn. She, I... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you I never hate the yellow girls. girls. But I'm still a little traumatized by this pull down your Iron Man underwear that really like triggered me for a moment. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do I ask for an explanation? Do I want an explanation? I don't know. But sometimes I just I just let stuff go sometimes. Like, sometimes I don't even ask for clarity. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, I don't and sometimes, as they say, when in doubt, go without, you know? Okay, I guess I'm just going to let it I'm just gonna let it be, honey. I'm going to let it be. But can I talk about who my favorite is? Yeah, please do. Please do. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my God. <laughs> we got another Mississippi fan in the building. Mississippi, my favorite. She the best one on the pole, honey, too. Okay. She, she tough. She tough. Mississippi is my joy. She t- but Mercedes is tough too now. I, I no, mean, I, hey, I I did poll for uh, I did um poll for like three and a half years. Like mm-hmm. if so I be looking for a technique, I don't be looking at the ass kicks and stuff. <laughs> I'll be looking at the technique behind it. And I say Mississippi the baddest one. Mississippi is like the Kelly of the group. Yeah, and Mercedes is the Beyonce because she got the total, she got the body. Okay? Right, right. Because, okay. because I was just about to say, when you talk about technique, what technique do you have? If you ain't got no ass to go at that technique. So I mean, did, the, the, the the technique, the, did y'all see what? Did you see what she was doing? Okay, I, that's yeah. fine that Mercedes was twerking, but literally, Mississippi had to hold her body weight on the pole. And balance Mercedes' body weight on top yeah. of her while she is yeah. twerking. That yeah. is poor at work. Like, yeah. when she grabbed yeah, that was crazy. Girl yeah. I can't even remember the white girl name. Then she had to grab her, get it, swing her around the pole. Like, that is come on, y'all. See, y'all follow for the little, the little show and stuff. You gotta, you gotta read between all of that. No, we, look, yeah, I, still, I love my, I love my, my, my Mississippi. She's yeah, a joint. We, we believe in crooked letter. We we know she the toughest one. But crooked letter, crooked letter. Ah, we know she tough. Back, back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so look, can, can I tell y'all what freaked me out about last night episode? Everybody on this panel probably know what freaked me the hell out last night on this episode. So we we do know Andre is joning for Otto, right? And mm. when Autumn found her picture on his computer, you know, that caused her to run out of there with her crazy ass and go back and go talk to uh, Uncle Clifford. Well, mm. Uncle Clifford took her phone when he was calling and gave him the passcode to get into the boom boom room. And of course, Dre is running up in there thinking that when he get in the boom boom room, it's going to be Autumn night. And little right. and behold, do he see he see the blonde hair, but what turned around was definitely not an autumn night. That was more like a winter night. And I was like, what in the hell? That freaked me the hell out. Y'all I was, not paying on Uncle Clifford, okay? Know, Uncle Clifford. Man, that was like, he turned around. I felt like Game of Thrones. I felt someone was going to say, winter is coming. That's what I felt like, too. Yeah, now, I like Uncle Clifford, though. Don't get me wrong. Uncle Clifford is a mainstay on this show. He's a cornerstone on this show. He's actually probably the showstopper, to be honest with you. But, man... If I would have been expecting to see Autumn Knight and I saw Clifford, I would have been very, very upset. When That's you saw his face, he had a little mean mug stank face the whole time that Uncle Clifford was talking to him. Yeah, but he that's it. it. I would have left. It wouldn't have been no sitting in the room with the fake ass Dr. Dre hemming up the door. I would have left. I want to know what episode is it going to be 
that Diamond kills Mississippi's, Mississippi's uh, dude. I do too. It's gonna happen. I want to see what his raggedy behind looked like in the first place. What is that? Did he come in with the flower? Did he come no, in? That was the the, that was with her other regular. Remember, she had two. Oh, regulars. Yeah, that was her regular. That what, was, if that, it, what if it's the mayor? You you do you think mm. isn't that Isaiah Washington? Yes, yeah, so he be playing that character a little bit too good. Okay, he, he do, <laughs> he do, he really do. Uh, um, it, it could be him. Because we, they revealed last night that he's dirty. I mean, yeah. He, yeah. he's knee deep in the dirt. Um, and I, I really felt like, like Larry said, the the ep- this show picked up heavily by second episode. The first episode was kind of a building, a setting up of everything that happened. But now that steam is rolling. And what do you guys think that um, besides trying to siphon money? From the casinos, what is Uncle Clifford looking for? And I'll give that one to you first, Larry. I mean, I think he's he's looking for security. I think he wants, I think he wants to be in a position where his club is going to be right there, where the casino is, so that he'll have a steady revenue. You know, he'll have a, he'll have a whole bunch of money coming. He'll have a steady revenue stream, and he'll be he'll, you know, because he's so in debt, he's all he's living. He's I forget month to month. It feels like he's living week to week. And mm-hmm. I think he's looking at this as his opportunity to climb out from under that mountain of debt and to actually maybe thrive a little bit. So yeah. you know, we'll see. I mean, they're they're I I hope he recognizes and understands they are coming, you know, what's his name even said it? They're coming for your club. So right. You know, mm-hmm. as far as you being in debt like you are, that he needs to figure out some situation to, to straighten that out because right now, as it is, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna pull it out from underneath him if he's not careful. I mean, we know they're not. I mean, it's one of those things where they make it seem like it's. I mean, the show's called P Valley. There is no P Valley without that club, so we know it's not going anywhere. But you know, he needs to be careful with it. But. Well, I, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. It, it's going to be interesting how that whole thing plays out. They need they need to speed up that that storyline a little bit, though. So, so. T, T streams. Have you seen um, P Valley yet? No, I have not checked it out. But I'm listening to you guys, and I'm I'm looking here at my other computer at at the highlights and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and. If it's only three episodes, I'm gonna go ahead and, and check those boys out tonight. Yeah, you dive on into it. So let me ask um Sharonda and Larry, what is the information that Uncle Clifford has on Corbin? Now i they, they pronounced that they went to high school together. Mm-hmm. Is is he strictly talking about knowing that Corbin is the love child of the maid? Or is there something deeper in terms of information that he's got on Corbin? I thought that was the main part. I know some people were trying to allude to the fact that maybe him and Cliff had a relationship or something growing up. I don't know. But, I mean, I think the main part of it is the fact that people, they don't know that that is, like, who his father really is. And I thought that was actually some that was actually some very good writing in that conversation that Cliff and Corbin have when, you know, when Cliff is just like talk about reparations, you went from your father not even claiming you, your your brothers acting like he didn't exist to his last breath, he literally gave you a part of his legacy, right? He gave mm-hmm. you the start of the generational wealth that you should have had when you were growing up. And now you're the only person who kept their money. Right. And the Mm -hmm. only person who was working to keep like the farm going with the cotton and all of that stuff. Like he's the only one working to like keep everything going. And that's why he's the only one who can see the vision because he grew up with nothing and came from nothing. So that's why he wants to take this further than just a get rich quick scheme, which his brothers are trying to do. Right. Right. And it was interesting too. that I was glad they actually wrote it in there where they said, my brothers, they blew through all their inheritance and now they just want to take this little measly, you know, million dollars each and, you know, or $2 million each, whatever it is, instead of seeing the bigger picture, mm-hmm. you know, because they, because when they first started this show, when they were show, when they were talking about the brothers wanted to sell and he wanted to lease, they didn't really explain why the brothers were so willing just to take this lump sum payment and get rid of the property. And and now that he's explained, 
that they blew through their inheritance and that's why they're you know they're impatient and you know and now they just want to get a big lump son and move about their way you know and I, I get that. I'm mad that they. I'm mad that they wrote in there. Let me go back to picking this cotton, though. You know, <laughs> that's that. Was, I mean, it was kind of funny, but you know, it is what it is. But I, I, I think that was a really good scene because they did. They they explained a lot in there. They left you. They left you wondering a little bit about, you know, what their relationship was at when they were younger. But then they also explained in a lot of ways that this was not some relationship that just grew out of, you know, um, what's his name, uh, going to the club. Right. That this was a relationship that, that extended all the way back to their childhood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so when you, once you know that it, it really changes the dynamic between these two characters, cause it's no longer just like, Oh, I'm a, I'm a club pimp and I'm a trick that goes there. No, it's this thing where they, they have been friends and they have a long-standing relationship and, and, you know, that predates all of this other stuff and there are secrets that have been kept. And so what it, really what it tells you is that in the, in the future, when, when uncle Clifford is probably going to find himself into, in some trouble that, that what's his name, what's the other, what's the, what's the, what's the little dude's name? The, the Corbin. Um, his name is Corbin. Corbin that, when Uncle Clifford finds himself into trouble, he's probably going to be able to find a, a serious loyal ally in Corbin, not not just because he kept Corbin's secrets, but because Corbin actually is somebody that he knows and cares about him, and they're actually friends in the real sense of the word. So, but does you know, Corbin? You know, Corbin we'll see how it pans out. Say is, it again. Is Corbin aware that this includes them having to? Get rid of like the trip club. Nope. Mm -mm. He's not aware of that. The only person that's aware of that is Andre. Okay, his raggedy right. behind. Yeah, yeah. So that's the next person I wanted to get y'all's so perspective horny. on. Uh, so Andre? Yeah, tell them tell, tell us why you're mad, Sharonda. What is your thoughts and opinions on Andre? First of all, who text somebody talking about last night was lit? <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's plenty of corn balls out there that do that. Plenty of them. I mean, let somebody send that to me. You are getting blocked, okay? Don't ever send me no message. You are getting blocked. But then when he was like, have a blessed day, I said, well, you know what? I would love my significant other to want to cover me with all of the blessings, okay, of the Lord. But no, you know, mess like that after we send up her sinning, you going to send me have a blessed day and we've been sitting all night. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? He is so loud talking about this. He just, he's just corny. He's so corny. First of all, I don't even know why you so like mesmerized by Autumn because I, she just don't, she don't, she don't do it for me. She's a, she's a pretty girl, but like she just, her attitude, honey, her attitude just, it's just not what's up. And I just, I don't know. I really want to learn more about the relationship between him and Isaiah Washington's character. Me too. Because I don't know. If that was God Daddy or something. Or like, men mentor, or you know, maybe maybe what? Isaiah Washington's character is friends with someone that was a father figure or a role model to him. He the talks about that, his family that right, used to right. be there. Mm -hmm. Um, or something to that effect. But I think I the, the, the vibe I get from Andre is. He likes to say he's a save a whole woman type of dude. Oh, most he, definitely. He, he's Captain Save a Whole more so than my man Chris from High Town. Larry, talk to me about your boy Andre. Remember, we thought that he was going to be the good black dude, and it turns out he's got his own issues other than just having nut all on his stomach from a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I didn't, you know what? I didn't notice that in the scene, and I'm glad I didn't. I didn't notice it till you oh, mentioned I it. I definitely saw that, honey. Yeah, I, I saw it too, man. It, and and I can't unsee to. it. I can't unsee I'm, it. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't see that. So, you know, I, I will say with Andre and with uh, with Andre and with uh, with Autumn Knight, I'm okay with both of them being sort of weird and and off because. They, I mean, they, they put them together because they're sort of weird and sort of off. And, you know, I mean, I, I feel like 
I feel like with Andre, I feel like he's a little um, he's a little conflicted because, you know, he went to school. I believe he's an attorney. And so he went to school. I don't think he came back to town to do this. I think he came back, you know, and sort of got thrown into this situation because he's dealing with his family. But I think that he wanted to do probably something more on the up and up, because even when he talks to his I believe it's his it's his dad or his uncle he's talking to. He's talking to my daddy. Yeah, and he's telling him, I don't think this is on the up and up. I don't think this is there. And this, this is just the way things are done. So I think he wants to be more legit than he than he's allowed to be. And with Autumn Knight, with her kind of little weird attitude, I think it's because she's traumatized. We know I think we know she's traumatized. Yeah. I don't think her attitude is just the way she probably normally is. We know that she's been through traumatic experiences with with men through the you know through Katrina, I guess it is, or whatever floods they've had. And and she's you know she's losing a child potentially. We know she's been through a lot. They keep on sort of piecemealing out little bits of the story. So I imagine at some point, at some point, they're gonna have to have a big reveal. We know that she got that big payout. So we know that that money is gonna play into this somehow. Like if once you get all that big stack of cash, I don't know why you're still stripping. Just go and start your life over somewhere. But you know, with nine thousand dollars, disrespectful. Is y'all all disrespectful? It was like what were they paying ones? I mean, she had stacks. That was nine thousand dollars, man. That was nine thousand dollars. That was nine thousand money like that. I mean, I mean, what was Western Union paying her in ones? I mean, it wasn't a strip club. That was that was the money change place, man. That was nine thousand dollars, man. That's all she got. All she got. Okay. I I don't know what she's gonna do with that, but I can tell you right now, nine thousand dollars. Hell, I can go to Detroit and go buy me a little fixer up house, probably for less than that. She's they, huh? And they going up. Oh, they going up. They <laughs> yeah, they, they done renovated Detroit, man. But get getting back to the dirty delta. Um, I think the one character that we don't have enough information on is the mayor. Um, you know, just how crooked do y'all think the mayor is? I'll start with you, Sharonda. How dirty is the mayor? The church, the house of the Lord is crooked. I don't see why we would be shocked that the mayor is crooked. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, we can't preach it. That's for damn sure. What? Nobody's supposed to be here. What? Yeah, that is for damn sure. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Damn. Golly, I mean, that whole town crooked. Okay. Okay. So then let's let's get to my favorite character, the car that I'm driving, the Mercedes, and how in the beginning people was against her from the way they treated Autumn. But I've been writing her saying that she is really just hard grizzled on the outside, big old ball of sugar on the inside. When is this relationship between her and her mom going to break down? Because she's waiting to get this money back for her mom so she can open up her dance studio. She has issues with her own daughter that has been taken away from her and given to another person who is lashing out because her mom is actually stripping. And She's doing things on social media. What is going to be the Achilles heels for this character? Larry, I'll give it to you first. Um, I mean, it, it, you know, one, I don't know if she's ever getting that money back. She thinks she's getting that money back. So we'll see because that gym, I'm not sure that's going to happen, hmm. you know. But, I mean, obviously they're, they're, sort of, they're sort of teeing it up this whole relationship with the daughter and, and her and you wouldn't have given me up. And, they're, you know, they're, at some point they're going to have to tell us why she gave her up, what happened in her life that required her to give her daughter to somebody else and not, and not be there to raise her own child. Mm -hmm. I mean, her mother's there. You would think her mother might have been there to, to help take care of her instead of having her give her up. But... Uh, you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. Obviously, there. You know, obviously the girl is is going through some stuff. It's you know, I mean, I imagine this. You know, seeing your mom strip and all that stuff is one thing, but she also apparently she lost her dad. The little girl's going through some stuff. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I understand you can get mad and and, and I, it would be upsetting to see all that too. But you have to deal with it. I imagine in a better way because the girl seems like she's traumatized and. And dealing by, with trauma by simply yelling and punishing is not going to do any good for her. So, you know, she really, they, the, the, the mother 
and whoever that guardian was, they need to figure out how do we deal with this in a in a real positive way. Otherwise, you're just gonna have more stripper parties, you know, or more booty shaking parties. Mm. So, can, can we talk about this age though? Okay, because in, in the first episode, Mercedes said that the the stripper retirement age is 25. Right. Her daughter, like. This this not adding up, y'all. How how old was she when she had a baby? Probably like 12, 12 or 13. Yeah. And so, that's assuming that, but we know Mercedes is not 25. Mercedes looks like she's probably 35. But no, she no. Said, no, she, she, said, she said she's, she's 25. Yeah, she says she's and, 25. And the thing is, the arguments between her and her mother, she made it seem like her mama was pimping her out. She did. She oh. did. She did. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that and that's why they really? got that contemptuous relationship between each other right now. And then the mama is in a church where they don't want women to be lead pastors of the church. Maybe that's every church. That that took me back to I I grew up coaching. So mm. when he said that, I I remember when I wanted to, I went to <laughs> the King Junior for Black History Month at church. Okay, mm -hmm. and they told me that I had to be Coretta, and I said, you know what? I said, Mama, I don't fight you on a lot of stuff, but I got to sit this one out in protest because if they tell me I can't get behind that pulpit and recite my I have a dream speech, we have a problem. So as soon as he said that, I said, see that. That's talk about black women are the backbone of the church. Okay, so let me be the backbone of that pulpit. Uh, I'm still the backbone of that collection plate. But that wouldn't be the backbone. That would be that would be the front. That would be the that would be the the face and the body. You're the, you're the backbone. Backbone <laughs> now, holds everything up. I was just like, I said, girl, you need to leave that church. They trifling. Talking about you won't you. I'm sitting her. I'm sitting up here single handedly saving your building fund, but I can't preach. No, because mm -hmm. women are supposed to preach. What? It's in the Bible. Women are supposed to teach. They're not supposed to teach men. They're not supposed to. You I didn't write the book. I didn't write the book. I didn't read it. You about to start it, Mary. I just said it. I didn't. I didn't write it. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, people. If people are gonna live by the book, they live by the book. There ain't nobody in that church living by the book. Oh, I agree with you on that. No one is living by the book in that church. So, I mean, it, once you're making your own rules, you can make, you can do whatever you want to do, but, you know. Yeah, that, that, yeah, I, nobody is living by any rules in that church. And for the most part, most churches, as far as that's concerned. But to, to finish off this particular episode so we can get T Strings back involved, what would each of you, um, Sharonda and Larry, how would you rate this episode? Sharonda, you go first. Give the episode. I mean, I really like this, so I give it an eight out of ten. That's mm -hmm. mainly for the poll work of the trifecta that we saw in this week's episode. Um, mm -hmm. And I did like learning more about the relationship between Corbin and Cliff, and then also the bombshell that Mercedes has a daughter. But really, just watching Mercedes curse them out, like <laughs> bless your thotty hearts. I was just like, you that know, was funny. I, I can't do this. I cannot yeah. do this. But what I will say is they got one more episode of these little traumatizing flashbacks for Autumn. Oh, my God. After that, I, it's a wrap, okay? Y'all need to give us some answers. Let us know, okay? Because we know she she had money, okay? Because the way that she was telling Andre how to set up his account so he could take the bribes and not have anyone, um, not have it traced back to him. That's why yeah. I never talk about she traumatized and this and that. No, she a little bougie, raggedy, old, nasty attitude having woman, okay? Mm. So, mm -hmm. I'm just like, mm -mm. Well, I don't know if she's bougie, but she's definitely something. She's she's She what has some knowledge. You right. like that lady like that? How she, she looked at her? She definitely, she, there's something with her. I don't know. I don't know if she maybe came from nothing and then had money and now she's back to not having anything. I don't know. There's something there that she has. It looks, it seems like there might be an interesting story there. I don't know what it is. And I'm curious because, you know, she does, I mean, they, she does, she says things that make you think like, oh, maybe she comes from money, mm -hmm. but 
I don't know anybody who comes from money who thinks of I lost everything. The first thing that I'm gonna do is go to a strip club and start stripping. That's mm. just not how people who come from money think. Most of the people who come from money think like, oh, I'm gonna go and make more money by doing something else besides stripping. They don't think about selling their body is even really an option like that. Well, could so, it be could it be that the man she was with had, I money? Knew had money? Yeah, could it be that he had money? He taught her, you know, how to helping the business, run the business, manage the business, and then they lost everything. Well, yeah, it could be. That's why I was saying it could have been that she came from nothing and then had something, and then she lost everything, and she's back to having nothing again. So maybe that's why she has some of that knowledge, but she's just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I haven't given up on Autumn Night yet because it's clear that she's traumatized. Until they tell us where her trauma comes from, I don't want to just judge her too harshly because I feel like – I feel like she might have good reason for being the way she is, but you know, we'll find out. I'm not, I'm not writing her off just yet. I know a lot of people like to write her off cause you know, they just look at her as the little pretty bougie, you know, yellow girl. And a lot of people like to write her off cause of that. But I think, I think I'm willing to give her a little bit of a shot. I will tell you this though, with, uh, with Mercedes character, mm -hmm. I know everybody was looking at her like she's bodied up. Mercedes needs to be careful cause she's like a cupcake away. Man. She's like one cupcake away. Man, that's it. Look, that's it. Just one. She's not there yet, but she's close. Like Mississippi is nice. The 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 M I crooked letter crooked letter I crooked letter crooked letter hump back hump back ah. Now sure. Now her body's on point, man. Larry, 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 we, trying to get cut today. Okay, Larry, <laughs> we, 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 Larry, we not gonna take no disrespect. From Mercedes, and every Man, time you, every like time we, 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 no we is not going to take no respect for you and Mercedes when every time you talk about liking the lady, she light skinned with a slip and slide forehead. Talking that about Ramona Power, it's talking about true. you like this autumn night. I'm not going to yeah. take this disrespect from you talking about Mercedes. That, that is not true. Mercedes that is, like got that. abs on her. I saw abs on her. So, Mississippi is as brown as brown gets. Mississippi is like a wonderful drink of uh, of Mississippi sweet tea. She is she is as brown as brown gets. And it said like when I when we were watching Power, I was loving me some Tasha. I like don't get me wrong, I like them all. I like I like dark girls. I like yellow girls. I like brown. Girls, I like I like women. Period. Yeah, so, but you don't like them if they won Reese's peanut butter cup from losing an ab. You don't like them like that, though, huh? Y'all right ain't got to compare no woman, okay? Mississippi beautiful. Autumn Love, even though she get on my nerves, she beautiful, too. And Mercedes, she got a banging body. He wasn't saying that that booty was a cupcake away, was he? No. Nope. Like, no, no, I'm not into I'm not into the oversized I'm not into the oversized booties. Like, they talked about me for not being into Lala because I'm not into the big oversized booties. That's just not my thing. I okay. like I like proportions. I like I like people to be proportionate. That's that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. you know, well, don't give me them little bird legs, and then you got this big old crazy to dunk. It's just <laughs> not too much. I don't need to have all of that. And then you have these little tiny bird legs with no calves or anything. I want to see some. I want to see some. I want to see some little bit of everything looking right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, La so, Larry. Larry claims he wants his whole Thanksgiving dinner. He wants all parts of the turkey. And I guess we know we we're gonna we're gonna stop the P Valley talk there. Great episode, ladies what? and gentlemen. Yeah, it was an eight for me too. 